how to make good. Future base. But I can't do it alone. I'm gonna need the help of my friends over at Output Arcade, who are offering a free 30-day trial for you and 50% off your first month using the link below. And they were kind enough to sponsor this video where I show you... It's no secret that I've been disillusioned by the future bass genre lately. Oh my gosh, no drop here yet, huh? Three minutes! But you're probably sick of me whining about it, so I'm gonna try and make it good. First, set the BPM to 150. Future bass, guitar loop. While that's a good start, it's better to throw it into a sampler and chop it up so it's a little more unique. Process it. And if you want guitar loops like this without paying a nasty subscription fee, check out Future Bass Guitar Loops Volume 1 now available. Link down below. And to keep with the guitar theme, pop punk bass. Cause Reese basses are too obvious. Fat kick. Reverb snare. And put it into this pattern. On the very last snare hit, automate a panned delay. You know, for the producers who are only in it for the aesthetic and also enjoy the sound of jingling keys. Add in a hi-hat on eighth beats to fill the space and to keep the drums moving. And a DNB break for a fill. Half time and filtered. Now while this guitar melody is pretty emotional in itself, we can add even more emotion using a counter melody like... These are ridiculously easy to write using Arcade's huge selection of instruments. This is the one I picked. And inside Arcade you can easily customize each sound with all of these effects. Using this I'm able to add a bit more rhythm to this counter melody. And all together... Wobble chords incoming, but no super saws here. Using Arcade, you can make wobble chords with more interesting sounds rather than just super saws, like this flute over here. These are the chords I used. Auto pan adds wobble. And I once again customized it with Arcade's really easy sliders. Also, Plugin makers. Look at what Arcade can do like, that like 90% of you guys can't. Whoa! Now, after copy pasting a bunch of elements from the intro, like bass guitar, counter melody, the original guitar loop, I was gonna add some build up drums, but the stream team told me not to. So, instead of build up drums, how about a bunch of risers for tension? And just like any good future bass song, we gotta have some vocal as well. Back to Arcade. Just go into their lines here, and I especially like this one called Hook, where you have all sorts of different vocals that you can start from. And in the whole build-up they sound like... Now, these vocals 
Locals are still a work in progress, but it's a great way to start as we lead into... Yeah, yeah, super saws are a given. But, instead of the typical... Alright chat, I'm done. Not gonna lie, I'm just like... So how do we keep ourselves from going to the Imagine Dragons Mega Church Ah Sound and Beats? First, pick a chord progression you like. And you don't even have to write the chords yet. Just use the root note and put it on a poop saw. In my case, I went with... In addition to picking a chord progression you write, it helps not to just repeat the chords that you've been doing in the intro and build up. For example, my intro sounds like... And the drop sounds like... While this isn't like a rule that you must follow or else, when you copy and paste the same chord progression, it has that beginner repetitive quality and might be the reason why your future bass songs or any melodic song you write might sound boring. Now I'm not saying go and change the whole chord progression. That's not what I mean by that. You can switch it up by just changing up the rhythm, just like I did with the drop progression here. You can see how in the intro I'm doing quarter notes and then in the drop I'm doing more chopped up eighth or 16th notes. In addition to that, the only chord I really changed is the second one here, keeping it on the B instead of going up. So this is drop chord progression. This is uh, intro chord progression. Drop, intro, to help you compare. And then, rather than just the gated eighth note, to have the super saws do more intentional rhythms, that sounds more like... You can see that I mapped it out using the root notes. Next thing I do is I move over to the drums and I have the kick match that exact rhythm. This is optional for the uh, first bit of the drop, but having the snare on the three, if you look up on the timeline on the point three, putting the snare there every time helps as well. And you'll notice I changed the rhythm of the bass here, but it still matches up with the kick. And when you put the snare on the three, make sure nothing else plays at the same time of the snare as well. Notice how I'm cutting off the bass right when the snare hits. That makes the song feel tight and bouncy, instead of whatever this style is. <laughs> Next, you can turn these basses into chords by using tools like chord rack or turn them into chords the old-fashioned way by skipping notes. Then add a leading voice on top of the chords that follows the rhythms of the drums that you just picked. But don't just loop that. Incorporate antiphony, aka call and response. Contrast this choppy rhythm with longer chords like... Before you ask to see the preset, the actual thickness comes from how you write the chords themselves. I explain a lot of this here in this video, and this video, and this video, and this video, and this video. And so go watch those after this one. But the point I'm getting at, it's chord writing, note selection, and not so much the synth itself. Because this synth is just a saw wave made in wavetable, the unison mode set to noise, eight voices, and pumped up a bit. And some pretty basic processing, which is compression with OTT, a little bit of distortion, and some reverb and erosion. When you have the chords all figured out, it's really easy to layer it as well with something like this airy square layer and a mono saw, complement the super saw, which is the saw preset without and a unison on it, and a shorter envelope, and a more controlled filter, and this will help you translate the big saw stack into mono. Group all of those three together, process it with some compression. If you have a plugin like Soothe or Smooth Operator, this can help reduce some resonances. EQ out all the lows so it has room for the bases that you made. And there you have it. Big, thick saw stacks.
Now with the saws doing different rhythms, we still need those eighth note beats to keep the song moving. So rather than having the super saws do them, move that rhythm to other stuff like the vocal that we got from Arcade. Now, as I said earlier, Arcade is great because the sounds are high quality and you don't need to do a lot of processing to make them work. But at the same time, you could resample Arcade like this. If you want to process the heck out of it, you can and you get stuff like... After all that, it still sounds a little empty, but that's because we're missing movement through ambience, aka ARPS. But instead of using a square wave, like <laughs> a square, arcade, especially the future perfect line, which has perfect sounds for this. But like, listen to the song once I add this really sneaky yet crucial element. RK is great because you can also make ARPs like. Next, you might have gotten around this far into the drop, but to make your future bass song stay good, you must evolve the drop by introducing other elements like this piano. Now that your drop has come together and you have this solid idea looking at you right in the face, now you can add some of the fun stuff like... Or you might have heard them already, but these little... And as the drop continues to evolve, you can move some of the super saws you want to accent a bit more, a little bit forward from the kick, add that extra impact. But either way, when you adapt a genre, try to subvert a few of the tropes and find inspiration from outside of what every other artist in that genre does. And I'm not saying invent something completely new. Maybe try taking a trope from another genre. Don't forget to include high quality sounds like the ones from this video sponsor, Output Arcade. You can try it for yourself for free using my link down below. Plus on top of that, you get 50% off your first month and also grab the Future Bass Guitar Loop sample pack for maximum emotion. Check out all the guitar loops you can get. So many, Fif 15 guitar loops for $15. How sick is that? The possibilities are endless. Look at me go. I'm such a good salesman. You know, honestly, it, it honestly just felt like it was Christmas of 2012. Literally, time is flown by so fast. That being said, it's just a fun.